Alright, here we go. <laughs> well, welcome to Raw and Real episode one. Today we're gonna talk about salvation. I am joined with Pastor Terry, the, the head pastor of Christ the Healer Gospel Church, uh, uh, Toro Ministries. And this is just a, such an honor to have you here, Pastor Terry. Uh, he's actually the host. I'm just, I'm also a presenter, but he's actually <laughs> hosting me as I'm hosting him. So it's it's a, it's an ex beautiful exchange. So today we're going to talk about salvation. Pastor Terry, how do you feel this morning? I feel great. Amen. Uh, I feel like his mercy is new every morning. So I wake up always feeling like I, I live in that realm, that mercy. His mercy is new. It's fresh all the time. So I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Let's say a non-believer asks you, how do I become born again? How do I get saved? What will be your answer? Well, first of all, I'd ask him like uh, a little bit about his background. And uh, like, because, you know, just if he, he come up with that question and say, well, Okay, why why are you asking that? What's what's your background? Where did you, uh, what what was you? What did you grow up in church? Or did you not? Or kind of some you know just try to get the conversation going instead of just jumping right into that. And, yeah. And then uh, they give tell me the background. See if it's similar to mine. Say if he was an alcoholic, atheist, I can jump in there. Hey, I know how you feel. Um, I've been there. I've, I've been in that situation before. And uh, if it if it if it isn't similar, then I, I just kind of go with whatever the Lord leads me yeah. with. But it's just really keeping it simple. And um, I say I would just say, you know, um, I wasn't raised in a in a, in a church, and, and my family wasn't churchgoers, and and um, uh, I knew nothing about God. Yeah. But there was, you know, I knew there was something missing in my life, though. I, even though I did things my own way, nothing was working. So I, I would kind of go in that realm and just say, you know, um, and I know how you feel. I, I, I had no relationship with God at all, but I knew there was something missing and nothing satisfied me. I tried alcohol. I tried all the different, you know, things in relationship or even uh, after I married my wife, um, that beautiful wife, we've been married for 40 years now. And, and um, but, you know, as, as amazing as she was, she was always a good person and everything, but she wasn't enough, yeah. you know, and I thought, you know, what, what is missing? I have, I have a beautiful wife, I have children now, and, and uh, there was something missing. And I just, I just, I didn't. I didn't call it. Uh, I started seeking God because I. I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. <laughs> I started asking questions in my mind. I wasn't really asking any people. I was asking questions in my mind, like what's missing, you know. And um, our first baby died at birth, and I was an atheist, and I. Um, mm. uh, that really, you know, was hard for us. We we're twenty-one-year-old kids, and didn't really know what life was about and then all of a sudden I had a belief that you know when you die it's over and, and there's nothing more but that's that made me think um you know my my baby just died now our little boy just died and at birth and he never seen a second of daylight never took a breath outside the womb and I thought what was that all about yeah. you know am I missing something so I always I always go to my story to, to relate to no no matter what their background is I, I yeah. go to my story and say I was uh, I, I was an atheist and believe in God but there was I knew there was something missing and so that's kind of how I would do it yeah. relate to that and then just make make a simple presentation of the gospel after, you know get them communicating yeah. asking questions you know um, I found out about I went to a non-denominational church service. Um, the guy that was preaching was a businessman, and he just preached the simple yeah. gospel message about Jesus, his life, his death, his resurrection, ascension into heaven, and um, yeah, it was it was simple. Yeah. Keep it keep it simple, as simple as possible, relatable, yeah. and you know. Uh, when I gave my life to Jesus, I didn't know how to even know how to explain what had happened for the longest time. 
Because I, I was in this, there was all of a sudden there was love. God revealed his love to me. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what, why am I feeling, why am I feeling like this right now? I feel like I have peace. I have, well, I felt whole. Although there was a lot of work to do on me, <laughs> it still is. Um, I felt whole. I had this, I had this um, incredible sensation and in in my in my life and everything changed the outside world looked different to me people looked different to me um everything transformed and i didn't know how to explain it but years later i come up with this phrase it was like i walked into a wall of love a wall of love yeah and i could not get out of it mm. so yeah i just keep it simple relatable make it you know make it your story like i was Tell people it has to do, they want to relate to you. Yeah. That's why we call the ministry Toro. We want to teach people to reach people, reach people to teach people, you know? Yeah. And just one, keep it relational, relational, you know? Because if you imagine if everybody in the church just led one person to the Lord every year yeah. and brought them into the church and build a relationship out of that, relationships are really strong then because you're, you're relating your personal story to people. Eh? Yeah. I really, I really think that's the most effective. Yeah. Um, I love preaching from the pulpit. Um, there's something happens in the service with the corporate setting and pretty much every service I have the opportunity to lead people to Jesus, either for first time or backsliders coming home. Yeah. And so, and I always, when I get to the end of a message that I'm preaching, I'm not, not necessarily preaching a, a message of salvation, you yeah. know, to, for a personal relationship, but I shift it to that at the end, yeah. you know, because... I'll just turn off my phone here. It's yeah. Notifications on. Yeah. 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 So it, it's, yeah, to me, it's always your story. Yeah, and and know the know the gospel like how Jesus went to the cross for yeah. for us, took our sin. He took our he took our before he went to the cross. He went to the whipping post for our, for our healing of our bodies for the infirmities and diseases, um, and then he went to the cross. He took our he took our sin, but the good news is he took more than that. He took our sin. He took our guilt. He took our shame. Yeah. Took all that stuff and took it to the cross, so we don't have to walk in shame or guilt anymore. Yeah. Um, all have fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So, so we all come in at the same level. Yeah. You know, when the Bible talks about if we break one point of the law, we've broken them all. Mm -hmm. So we all come in at the same level. We're guilty of sin, but by the time when we we jump into that relationship with Jesus, we're no no longer guilty. He took our guilt. He took our shame. He took the sin. He took it all. So yeah, it's yeah. it's relatable through personal experience. I'm not ever talking about something I haven't experienced. Yeah. So that's that's what I you know and because being born again is a supernatural act of God. That's right. Like we can we can share the message, but only He does the saving. He only does that. That new birth comes through Him. Yeah. So it's it's what we're doing is really it's a supernatural act when God steps in and does that. And yeah. All of a sudden you see people they just start weeping and can't even you know, like I did. I cried when I when I got saved, man. I I cried and cried and I was, I was hard hardened at the time, but then all of a sudden this God Lord softened my heart and I got really emotional. My decision wasn't based on emotion. My decision was based on presence. Yeah. The presence of God was in the room and it sparked something within my emotions to make the decision to follow Christ. So, yeah. yeah. I have, I think, three more questions for you. Mm -hmm. I really like the fact, because I was going to ask you this, but you, you, you touched on it and we're going to have an episode where you share more about your story. Yeah. You touched on your story, your personal. I really like the, the fact that you did that. Um, my, my second question I'll ask is, what can you tell our viewers why it is important to be saved? Well, if if we don't get born again, don't get saved, we spend we'll spend an eternity separated from God in, in hell. 
where he doesn't want us to be. He doesn't want us to be. Obviously, he gave his life so that we didn't have to go. It's an awful place, like hell. I, 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 uh, I think it's like it's. There's no words to express how bad it is. I heard one guy talk. He had a vision about being in hell, and uh, it was terrifying. Anybody that's done that, that's had a vision or been taken to hell, or they come back, it's just it's a terrifying place. And there's no, you know, you're separated from God for eternity and you're in darkness. And there's one description in the Bible that talks about it's a place where the fire is never quenched and the worm never dies. Yeah. You know, and one guy had a vision of, he was like, these worms were all over him and it's just like completely driving him crazy. And then he'd jump into the fire and then he couldn't stand the fire. So he'd jump out of the fire back to the worms and sin in and out, in and out. Just forever, there's an eternity of torment. Mm -hmm. And uh, God didn't design it for us. It wasn't his way of punishing us. It's something that's it was created for the devil and his, his, his workers of iniquity. But it's separation. It's... Um, you're, you live eternally, so if you reject Christ, you're you're accepting hell. Yeah. If you accept Christ, you're rejecting hell and, <laughs> and, and forever. Like that's that's it. You're separated from. Yeah. So I know, I know I'm I'm going to be with the Lord forever, but it's not because of anything good that I did. It's about the decision I made to follow Christ and and I fall in love with God and love God. And the Bible says that love God, and love people. So, yeah. so yeah, it's eternity, like it's for, like forever. It's hard. It's like it's hard to even have a grasp that concept because our life is, our lives go by so fast and they're so short. And already, I'm just almost sixty two years old, and uh, I'm going to be sixty two June third. It's just like a, like a word. The word says life. It's like a vapor. It appears for a while and then it's gone. We don't really have the time to make you know to sit and ponder about this stuff too long. There's eternity is waiting and it yeah. depends on our decision if i if when i give my life to christ and i'm born again my 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 decision has been made i want to spend eternity with christ and his people right and it's not heaven's like this place it's massive planet that <laughs> that you never die you're never sick you're never worried you're never anxious any of that stuff so that would be the you know, but that you know i I, I didn't give my life so I could miss hell. I I gave my life because I felt the love of God. Mm. And then I found out about hell after. Like, it's not a good place. And then I deserved to be there. I really did. Like, from the time I was 16 to the time I was 19, I tried committing suicide five times. So I should be in hell. Mm. But for whatever reason, that's why I'm so uh, caught up on the mercy of God. Because it, it always, it never ceases to amaze me, the mercy of God. And I deserved hell, but for some reason he spared me and had a plan, I guess. And and uh, I think also there was people praying for me and when I was in that state. And so I always remember to be praying for people that are struggling. Because, you know, we want, them, we want them to be touched by God. Because it wasn't... I didn't give my life to Jesus because there was a great preacher. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't a great preacher. Yeah. He was a good, talk, good speaker, but he wasn't a great preacher. But I gave my life because the presence of God came into that room, and I had, I just felt so much love and 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 so much uh, mercy. Like God has never reminded me of my past. The devil does all the time. But the God has never reminded me of my past, and he, he never brought that to the table. He says, I come here to, that day in that room where I gave my life to the Lord. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, um, I didn't hear God saying, you dirty, rotten sinner, I've come to save you. Yeah. He says, my son, I want you in my family. Mm. And uh, it's his desire is to have a family and have a big family. So, so it's personal choice. You have free will to choose. If you want to follow Jesus, you, you have eternal life through him and, and uh, all the benefits of the kingdom here on earth and then eternal life with him in a place where you no more suffering physically or any of that stuff. And then just to escape that hell thing is like, I I don't want to ever, I, 
I don't want to ever meet anybody that I've had the opportunity to share the gospel with yeah. where they reject it and go go to that place. It's, yeah. I've seen God pull people out of hell in the last minute of their life and a couple minutes, a couple hours to live sometimes, a couple days, three days. They give their life to Jesus. Jesus sweeps it and take, comes in there and just snatches them out of the hand of the devil and takes them into eternal life. So forever forgiven, forever washed, forever cleansed, forever um, uh, forever uh, recognized as a son or a daughter of God. It's really amazing, you know, when you think about it. Yeah. We do nothing to deserve it, yeah. but he's, he's given us that that opportunity to become born again and become a child of God. It's mm. really fascinating and saving us from eternity in hell. Amen. Mm. Amen. At this point, Pastor Terry, I would like to ask you my third question. Would you pray for whoever is ready to receive Jesus today yes. for salvation? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's so simple. Um, when I gave my life to the Lord, I didn't pray what the preacher prayed, actually. Wow. Yeah, it was. I was lost. I was in. I was in the presence of God. All I, all I did, and and I help people. I lead people in all the time praying because they don't know how to pray. But I didn't know how to pray. Mm -hmm. But I was in this atmosphere. Where I was. I just. I just looked up and I, was, I said, God, I wasted twenty nine years of my life. Whatever I have left, I give to you. That's all I prayed. And it was like bang, Jesus said. Phew. Come in. He remembered what he said. Till this day, he remembers what I said. <laughs> I give you the rest of my life. So mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was saying at the time, but I'm glad I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so yeah. So all you all you have to do if you if if you feel the Lord tugging, you feel that conviction of the Holy Spirit to draw you into a relationship with with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, that's 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 like okay, Lord. I'm ready, yeah. and as if you're uh, if you're wondering how you did, just like I did, I said, Lord, I wasted 29 years of my life. Um, I give the rest to you. Do what you want to do with it. It was kind of an unusual prayer, but most time, and it's like this: if you want to, if you want to ask the Lord into your life right now, you just gotta do this simple thing. Just repeat this prayer after me: Dear Jesus, come into my life, come into my life, and make me whole. Make me whole. I receive you. I receive you as my Lord. As my Lord. My Master. My Master. And my Savior. And my Savior. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your mercy. I receive your mercy. Come into my life now. Come into my life now. And I give you my life. I give you my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's many different ways you can do that. And, you know, the main thing is, you know. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's by believing in your heart that you're made right with God. It's by confessing with your mouth that you're saved. There's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus. But there's many different ways to ask him into your life. It doesn't need to be the exact prayer all the time, but the main thing is believing that he rose from the dead, that he died on the cross. He rose from the dead, was resurrected on the third day, and he hung around for 40 days after his resurrection out of the grave. He walked around the earth pertaining to the teaching his disciples things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then after 40 days, he ascended to heaven. And uh, 10 days, he told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the mm -hmm. promise of the Holy Spirit. They were there for 10 days, and then the Holy Spirit come upon them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, then after that, the devil had a real big problem on his in his hands. That's right. Because <laughs> the, before, they just, you know, when Jesus was here by himself, doing it, he, was, he was still limited. He was human. He, was, he could only reach so many people. But now... There was 120 in that upper room. That's they right. were filled with the Spirit of God. They become, they become Christ-like, mm -hmm. and they become to be able to do the things that Jesus did. So now, all, all of a sudden, there's 120. And then after one day of the church, there was 3,000, and then continued to pull it. Yeah. Continue. So yeah, it's it's exciting. So that's what I, I I always tell people: don't just come into a relationship with Jesus because 
uh, you're going to go to heaven. But get into a relationship with him so you can be an active participant in what he's doing here on the earth. That's right. More than anything. You That's know, right. like, like, like we, we got an eternity coming, yeah. but we got limited time here. So I want to be, I want to be, I want to be a part of what God's doing here yeah. on the earth, whatever little part that is. And we play our role. I'm not Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, but we play our, we do our role. And God's called me to preach. So I preach and, mm -hmm. and teach people to reach people. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> In case you didn't catch that, that's the name of the ministry. Torah ministry. Teach one to reach one. Yes. Amen. That's right. Teach one to reach amen. one. So if you got saved, uh, comment below or email us. The email will be on the description below. Let us know you got saved. And to find out the next step, say the next step after salvation, it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going to do that on the next episode. Yeah. Uh, because like Pastor Terry said, it's not just about going to heaven. It's not just about missing earth. It's about the relationship with or missing hell. Sorry. It's about a relationship with Jesus. And he has a mission, say a mission for us to do here on earth. And that is going to come on the next episodes. And Pastor Terry will be here again. And we'll see you then. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Love you. <laughs>